in the last stream, we were working on crafting this mining dimension portal to allow us to head on through into the mining dimension, which in turn has now opened up a lot more of this encrypted mod pack because now we no longer have to rely on our chemistry to get all of our resources. Instead, we can begin mining in the mining dimension to get basically almost every resource in the game. And that has massively opened up the pack because now I think we have a much more free will over what kind of mods we want to start working with. And although there is still some linear progression, like we do still have to move uh, through Blood Magic to get into Create, and I assume through Create to get into Mechanism and Thermal Expansion, we do have access now to things like Digital Storage. And one of the first things that I do want to work on in today's stream is setting up a basic simple storage network, because as of right now, our current storage situation is not the greatest. We've got a couple of custom storage drawers and we have three double chests that are currently just randomly filled with all of the stuff that we currently own and right now trying to find any one particular thing for a particular crafting recipe is a bit of a pain in the backside. I do also want to work at some point in today's stream on trying to get a quarry going in the mining dimension. If you remember right at the end of the last stream we did go and get some warped wart blocks that are going to allow us to get neodymium and once that we have the neodymium we can make infinite ender pearls and that ender pearl is going to allow us to make the shape quarry card and the builder to allow us to actually get a quarry up and running but uh, again before we do that i think i do want to start with the simple storage network mod and uh, the first quest here for that is to get a network cable thankfully the network cable is super easy to make it's six stone slabs with two iron ingots. Between streams, I have gone ahead and smelted a bit of stone. I've also cooked a few potatoes here to allow us to uh, not starve to death. Also, uh, the creator of the mod pack is in the Twitch chat and has shown me a very handy tip that I did not know prior to now. And that is that if you hold down the Ultimine key, as if you were gonna mine all of these, and instead of hitting left click, you hit right click, it will harvest all of the plants within that Ultimined area all at once, which is super useful. And especially if we end up making a larger farm in the near future, that's gonna make harvesting large quantities of crops so much easier. So uh, let's go ahead and throw some beets into the dissolver. And actually real quick, I am gonna move the dissolver over by one. Now that we have this upgraded Invar generator, this should be able to provide power to both the combiner and the dissolver, because I think each one only uses a maximum of about 15 redstone flux per tick. And speaking of that generator there, I will go ahead right at the beginning of today's stream and drop in some fuel just to keep that guy going throughout hopefully the course of today's stream. Let's run that iron oxide through again. That's going to get us a couple of iron ingots and combined with the stone that we've smelted, that should be basically everything that we're going to need in order to get our first network cable. Boom. Boom. And boom. There is our network cable. Uh, it does look like there are there are a few rewards here, actually. No reward for the network cable, but there are a few rewards for some of the other uh, blocks we're going to make here. So this right here, the storage network root, is the heart of the simple storage network. To make this, we need four nether quartz, four network cable, and one diamond. Uh, thankfully, we do have access to the nether, and we do have some nether quartz on us. Diamond-wise, we also did mine some diamonds at the end of the last stream, and of course, we did just make our eight network cable, and so crafting the storage network route should be nice and easy. Perfect, and as a reward, we get a speed upgrade, which increases the speed of importing and exporting. Not something that's gonna be super useful just yet, but is gonna be very useful when we start expanding out our simple storage network. Now on its own, this does not do anything. We can put this down, but it does nothing. Uh, to make it actually useful, we need this guy, the storage inventory. The storage inventory here requires a dropper, which is just cobblestone and redstone with four more cable and another iron nugget. So cable wise, we do actually have the perfect amount there. Redstone wise, it looks like we also have just enough redstone, which is fantastic. Uh, let me go here to simple storage networks. And then the only thing that we're missing by the looks of it is just some iron nuggets, which we should be able to make nice and easily. Boom. And boom. Nice. So this guy, if we put this down here, connected to our simple storage network, will display all of the items 
inside of our network. And again, right now there are no items in our network because we've not connected this to anything, but what we can do is we can use link cable here to link some of our storage uh, devices or containers to our simple storage network. So to make link cable, it is simply a chest with four network cable. Network cable we should be able to make. It looks like we are going to need a little bit more iron here. I'm actually not too sure how much iron we have left. We've got 11 there, we've got one there. We do have some iron oxide, which I feel like we might as well go ahead and break down. And then we've got a ton of iron up there. You'll love to see it. Let's do this, this, and this. That should get us more than enough iron to, uh, to work our way through here. Now, uh, we could definitely do with setting up a, uh, a faster method of smelting, but I think that's probably something that we'll look into once we've got our quarry online. Once we're actually getting resources generated and being sent to us, we can start looking at how we're going to process those resources in, uh, in a timely manner. For now, though, we can make another set of network cable, and if we combine that with a regular old Minecraft chest, we can make our first set of four link cable. So we want to put the link cable directly onto the chests, like this, and then if we connect that link cable to our network route using a regular old network cable, now if we look in our storage inventory, we can see all of the items that we have in all of our chests from one centralized location. And even better than that, we can actually take items out of those chests and put items back into those chests from the storage inventory here. No more do we have to rummage through these chests. Instead, we can just pull items out here. We could even search for items here. If I wanted oak leaves, I could just take those and put them back. This is gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier, but it does get better because we can upgrade our storage inventory to a storage request table, which is going to allow us to not only view the items and uh, interact with the items in the inventories, but it's also going to allow us to craft with those items as well. So. In order to make this, we need four regular crafting tables. One, two, three, four. That's going to be very easy for us to do. And then we need four gold as well, which looks like it might be a little bit trickier, but never mind. We have three gold here. And then the question is, do we have one more gold? We do. We've got six. Uh, we've got five. Nice. Okay. So we'll throw those in here and here. And once we have four gold, that should be our simple storage network taken care of. Now, taking this one step Further, we can actually craft what is known as a draw controller. This guy right here, the draw controller is super useful because it allows you to control all of your connected storage drawers. And so if we place down a draw controller connected to our storage drawers, we can then connect a link cable to the draw controller and that will give the simple storage network access to everything in all of the drawers connected to that draw controller. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Before we get too distracted, let's see if we can't make the at simple storage network request table. We can, fantastic. Again, this works in basically the exact same way as before, but now if we want to actually craft something, let's say we wanted to craft a chest, we could just shift click in the recipe and it would pull the resources that we need from the connected inventories directly into the request table. And uh, with this recipe, it is a little bit bugged. There's like a conflict here. We just have to click and make sure we're selected on the chest. But we can then just craft it and make it, which is going to make our lives so much easier. No more do we have to spend a ton of time rummaging through all of our different chests to try and find what it is we're after. No more do we have to use this filter button to try and find the specific resource that we need. Instead, we can do everything from within the confines of the storage request table. Now, the storage drawer controller is going to be down in improved storage, wooden storage, wooden storage here it is so the draw controller is pretty easy to make it's five stone one diamond one of any kind of storage draw and then two redstone comparators the redstone comparators there are going to need some nether quartz but that really should not be a problem for us let's do one uh two three four five six of those and then we should be able to craft two redstone comparators we totally can and then from there do we have everything we need we totally do nice so this is beneficial in a few ways if we throw it down like this, what we can do here, up until now, we have been depositing all of our chemicals individually into their drawers, right? So if we had some hydrogen, some carbon, and some oxygen, what we've been doing thus far is we've been double right clicking on the oxygen drawer, and that deposits all the oxygen, and then we double right click on the hydrogen, that deposits the hydrogen, and then we double right click the carbon, that deposits the carbon. 
That works, but with the draw controller, we can instead just double right click on the draw controller and that will take all of the items from our inventory that we have that have a, a corresponding draw and it will put all of those items into that corresponding draw. Now the radius on the draw controller or the range I should say on the draw controller is 12 blocks. So you can go 12 blocks out in each direction. If you put more than 12 frame draws down like in a row, it won't work. Uh, you can put more than 12 blocks down in total, but uh, if you kept going, like we, right now we've got four, if you went, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, this draw would work, but then this one, the 13th draw, wouldn't work. Like that one would not connect to the draw controller. So there is like a finite range that can be used, but it is like a cube. So you can do 12 to the left, 12 to the right, 12 to the back, 12 to the front, 12 up, 12 down. It's, it's a huge 25 by 25 cube that you can fill with draws before this becomes a problem. Um, so really it shouldn't become a problem, to be honest. Uh, we do have a lot of quests that we can claim rewards for. Uh, let me quickly go ahead and just dump a lot of the stuff we have here into our system. Again, now that we have access to this, we don't really have to worry too much about keeping our draws clean. Um, although we could probably do with looking at upgrading to things like these gold draws or these gold chests, just because they have so much more space. Uh, but now you can, I believe, only have one like storage device connected to a link cable. I don't think you can put like a chest here and have that connect. You can't. You have to have it connected to just one thing. So uh, just bear that in mind. But uh, for us, we do still have one spare link cable. And so despite the fact that all of our drawers are full, we should be able to do something like this and like this. And for now, that gives us even more space. Look at that. It's it's so much more space in, in just the one the one block. So we should definitely look at uh, at swapping out our regular Minecraft chests for uh, for some of these upgraded um, iron chest mod chests, which are uh, much easier to work with. Back to the quests here. We do have a lot to claim. Let's go ahead and get those. And the creator of the pack here, Encrypted, has been very generous. We actually get a crafting remote as a reward for crafting up. What did we get that reward for? We got it for crafting the storage request table. This takes it one step further. I believe we do have to right click this on our network route, but now this is linked to our network route and we can wirelessly access all of the items within our drawers, even if we're not connected directly to the request table. We can walk away from it and still access all of our stuff. We can still craft with it. We can still pull items out. We can still put items back in. This is super useful to have. Just in terms of organization here, there are some buttons. I like to sort mine by amount and descending from largest to smallest. So this is showing us the things we have the most of down to the things we have the least of. Uh, you can sort by name, mod, and you can change it to sort from highest to lowest or lowest to highest, whatever you want. But uh, I prefer to sort from highest to lowest and by amount. And I'm being told, again, by the Pank developer here, that this also works across dimensions. So if we head through into the mining dimension here, we can right click with that crafting remote and we still have access to all of our resources across dimensions, which is insanely powerful and also incredibly useful. Uh, the final thing that we can do here, of course, is uh, we can connect up the draw controller like this to the storage network system. Again, if we get another uh, network cable like so, we can do one, two, three, and now we should have access to everything in these drawers as well. As you can see, we've got 4,000 hydrogen, 2,000 oxygen, and 375 encrypted matter. Now, one thing you can't do with the basic link cable is set priority. However, there is an upgraded filtered link cable, which is actually very easy to make. So the filtered link cable requires one observer, cobblestone, redstone, and nether quartz. We don't have any cobblestone in the system, but we do have the ability to get cobblestone through our somewhat broken storage drawer over here. Either way, back over here, let's go ahead and make that observer. And then from there, we can make some filtered link cable. This is beneficial in a few ways. The first way that's most useful to us is that if we right click on the filtered link cable, we can set a priority. Um, and you'll see here that it says smaller goes first. So if we set this to like negative five, that's a smaller priority than these, what that should mean is that when we try and put something into the system, for example, if we take some hydrogen here, uh, right now we've got 1,973 hydrogen. You can see in the top left. If I try and put that hydrogen back in, that hydrogen should go into the draw. It does. And that's because we've set this at a higher priority. And so whenever we put something into the system, it should try and put those items into the draw controller first. And if it can't, then it will try and put them into the other storage devices that are connected via link cable. 
The other benefit to the filtered storage cable is that you can also filter what goes into it. So we could specify that we only want cobblestone going into here. That's obviously not what we want to do, but it might come in useful later on down the line if we do want to filter uh, only certain things going into a certain chest or into a certain drawer. So I'm being told as well that we can fix this compacted drawer. I've taken it off the cobble gen temporarily and I've taken everything out and just put cobblestone in. That is now showing correctly. I'm being told that we can fix this by locking this drawer. So as I think I mentioned at the start of the pack, in the shop, there is a quest for the draw key here. We could pay six cryptocurrency to buy the draw key, but I'm fairly certain we can also just craft the draw key. We totally can at the cost of, uh, of just a few gold. And given that we do have some gold lying around and the ability to make a few gold nuggets here, it seems like we might as well just go ahead and, uh, and craft this. It does also require an upgrade template. This is made with sticks and any old storage drawer. You get four at a time and boom. The benefit of the draw key here is that it allows you to lock a storage drawer by right-clicking. You'll see the little lock icon appears at the top there. And basically what that means is that if you take everything out of the drawer, like this, the drawer will still be locked to this specific resource. So over here, for example, right now we've got 13 carbon in this drawer. If I take the carbon out, the drawer is now like readily available to accept anything. And for example, if I put in this uh, stack upgrade here, that stack upgrade will go into the drawer because we've set the drawer controller to our higher priority. That's not what we want. What we want to do is put in the carbon, then lock the drawer to carbon so that even if we take all of the carbon out, the drawer is still only able to accept carbon. You'll see in the top left, we have zero carbon in there. But if I put that same stack upgrade back in again, it obviously doesn't go here because there's no three slots for that stack upgrade to take up. And so if we do the same thing over here with the cobble gen, the idea is that now that should stay like this forever. It should stay locked to having all three available to us and hopefully won't kind of bug out like it did before, which would be ideal. And you'll see now it is even showing the numbers correctly. We've got 6,000 cobble, 643 compressed cobble, and 72 double compressed cobble. This is actually working how it's supposed to work, which is good. One thing we can do here, and we might as well do, I think, is uh, go ahead and break the compacting drawer. Thankfully, the drawers do retain their inventory when you uh, break them and move them. They didn't in older versions of Minecraft, but they do in, uh, in newer versions. And uh, we can move this over to here. Let's do this and this. And now we can just whack a link cable down like that. And if we open this up, we can see that we have access to that 6,000 cobblestone from our simple storage network. So next up on the agenda, now that we have uh, a much more usable storage system, and also I think I will organize uh, some of these stuff or reorganize some of these things uh, fairly soon because I don't like the way the draw system looks. I don't like the fact that we've got so many uh, of these double oak chests. And I don't like the fact that our storage request table is kind of just in the middle of nowhere right now, but we can fix that later on down the line. For now, what I want to work on, or what I want to pivot back to is this builder and this shape quarry card, because that's going to allow us to actually start generating a large number of resources, which again is going to allow us to not have to run everything through the compactor to get things like iron and gold. So in order to make the builder, we need a machine frame, which is four iron, two gold nuggets, and two blue dye. We also need four bricks and an ender pearl. The ender pearl we can make from neodymium, silicon, and mercury. The neodymium, of course, we can get from the warp blocks. So if we take these warp blocks and we run them through the dissolver, that's going to get us neodymium. We can then take some of our simulation blocks. We are going to have to mine a few more. That should not be a problem. But much like we've been doing before, we can take those simulation blocks, craft them. I think it's into brown simulation blocks. And once we have those brown simulation blocks, we can dissolve those to get even more neodymium. Boom. And boom. And it does get us more neodymium. And one ender pearl requires 16 neodymium. So we already have enough to make one. We do want to make sure that we always have at least one neodymium lying around so we can make more of it in the future. But for now, we have enough neodymium to make the ender pearl. Mercury, we should be able to get also from the warped watt block. It looks like we probably have some of that lying around, maybe. We do. We have 20. And again, to make an ender pearl, we just need uh, 16. And then silicon, we can, of course, get from the silicon dioxide that we have a large amount of. Again, I've got to get in the habit of not going over there. I can just type in silicon dioxide into here, run that through the dissolver, and boom, we've got the silicon that we need. And so now, I assume over in this guy, we should be able to make our first ender pearl. Neodymium, silicon, mercury, and boom. Nice. So now we have that. We just need the uh, the bricks and the machine frame. The only tricky part about the machine frame is the blue dye. 
But uh, actually, it's not going to be tricky at all because we did manage to get some lapis at the end of the last stream. And so we can just craft that down like so. Uh, right now, I don't think we have enough iron. Never mind, we totally do. Fantastic. And so we are just missing some bricks, which does require clay. And unfortunately, I don't think that I saw any clay in the mining dimension. So it might be a little tricky trying to get four bricks. We might have to make quite a bit of, uh, of clay, which is made with this um, kalanite here, which is uh, is aluminum, oxygen, silicon, oxygen, hydrogen, and oxygen again. There's a lot of uh, chemicals involved in that. As for the shape quarry card here, we do need uh, three diamonds for the pickaxe and one diamond for the shovel. That looks like it should be very doable. I think we do have uh, four diamonds lying around. We'll make one pickaxe and we'll make one shovel. We totally do. And then from there, we just need redstone, iron, and right in the middle, we need a shape card. The shape card does require more bricks, so we need six in total. And then we also need some paper, some more redstone, and one more iron ingot. Now, paper we can get from sugarcane, and sugarcane we can make from sucrose, which I believe we should have a fairly large amount of. We totally do. Let's run that through our combiner here. Again, I'm fairly certain that much like cactus, the sugarcane should grow faster on the snad. I'm not quite sure as to whether or not it grows quite as fast as the cactus does, because the cactus did grow incredibly quickly. But uh, if we quickly grab a, uh, a bucket here, we can give this a test. Let's move some of our water over to here. And then how quick does this grow? It does grow quite quick, actually. It grows very quick. So yeah, getting more sugarcane, it doesn't go quite as quick as the cactus. The cactus was kind of uh, instantaneous in its uh, in its growth. I wonder if I replant it, does it grow faster? Maybe? Because like this one's not regrowing, but it seems like if I break them all and replant them, the initial replant grows very quickly, but then if you leave them, like if you just shave them down and then wait, they don't grow quite as fast. Interesting. Either way, we do have the ability to get a very large amount of uh, sugarcane should we need it and so paper is not going to be a, a problem for us chat is pointing out that we can get this uh, kalanite from durs and of course over in the mining dimension we do have access to uh, to basically a limitless amount of dirt now and so uh, if we just go ahead and i kind of don't want to alter mine the surface i think i'll do it down here because this will just break the dirt and not the grass i don't want to leave giant holes on the surface for us to fall into it would, you know, not that we're going to be spending too much time in the mining dimension, but I don't want it to look terrible. But uh, now we can run this through here, and there's, I think, a 10% chance, yeah, to get the Kalanite, which we got very unlucky. There, we only got three when we put in, like, a stack, so we maybe should have got more, but uh, the good news is that we can just take this, and uh, using, I think it's the compactor here, we can turn that directly into, uh, into clay. And so uh, if we just go and grab a few more stacks of dirt, we should be able to get all of the clay that we're going to need to make all of the bricks fairly quickly. All right, so a fair bit of dirt dissolving later. We now have 42 bricks. I also did head on back through to the uh, mining dimension and did a little bit more tunnel mining down at Y level 17, which apparently, according to JEI, is uh, the best level under like 67, which is where our world starts. Uh, this is the best level to, to find iron. And so now that we have that, and uh, we've started smelting up some more iron as well, which I think it is faster to go and mine for the iron than it is to use the beach, just because you get so much more iron per um per chunk like per iron ore it, it comes in so much quicker but now that we have it we should be able to craft up six bricks with those six bricks we should then be able to craft up a shape card and turn it into a quarry card now there are a few different types of quarry card that you can make the basic quarry card is probably all that we need this is going to mine ores and replace them with dirt so it's going to clear out uh, the area, but it's not going to leave like a big hole in the ground. There's then the clearing quarry card. This will actually delete any blocks that you try and mine. So if you want to just leave a big old crater in the ground, the clearing quarry can do that for you. There is a fortune clearing quarry card, which allows you to uh, to get more you know, diamonds, redstone, lapis, etc. Does require fortune though, is a little bit more expensive to make. And uh, there's also a regular fortune quarry card. Again, it's the same as the one we're making where it will replace the blocks with dirt. And then there's also a silk quarry as well, which will... Um, pick up all of the ores and let you process them after the fact instead of actually like giving you redstone it'll just give you redstone ore um, if that's what you're into for now though we're just gonna go with the regular quarry card which we should be able to make did i use my diamond pickaxe for something it doesn't matter even if it's broken it totally works for making the uh the quarry card that is fine and then in terms of the builder we should also be able to just do one of these we can nice so let's go ahead 
And for now, we'll steal this Invar generator that we have. I do it every time. I forgot that you can't break the generators using the pickaxe from Tinkers because it's bugged and it deletes it. You have to break the generator using a non-Tinkers pickaxe because that way it doesn't break. So instead, let's go ahead uh, and see. Do we have any nickel? We've got a ton of nickel chloride. Let's quickly whip up some more Invar. Do we have any Invar left over? We should have one, right? Oh, we've got four. Nice. Let's whip up some more Invar. Let's make another stone generator. And uh, let's make two of these if we can. Making, do we have any stone? We do. Making uh, two stone generators, we can leave one here and connect up all of our uh, alchemistry stuff to it. And then we could take one through to the mining dimension and, uh, and use that to power our builder. So boom, there is our second stone generator. And boom, there is our first invar generator. We are currently smelting up the remaining uh, invar required here, although it looks like we might not quite have enough. But either way, let's throw this down here and uh, we can temporarily move this guy. Let's, okay, yeah, I think this is fine. It does say pickaxe level iron. Can I break this with my Tinker's pick chat or will this break? It works, perfect, okay, boom. And eight more Invar later, boom, and boom, we got our second Invar generator. Nice. Okay, so we have our builder, we have our quarry card. The final thing that I think we're probably going to need is potentially a filter as well. This thing is fairly easy to make, does require one more redstone, which it actually looks like we are missing, unfortunately. Thankfully, we can just quickly head back through to the mining dimension. And uh, again, if we look at where redstone ore spawns most commonly, it's right down at negative 64. So we probably want to head back to our stairway, which I think is over here, and uh, continue using the mining tunnel to try and get down to the lowest level that we possibly can, because the further down we go, the more redstone we find. And I assume that we're probably just going to run into redstone on our way down anyway. And there we go. I see some redstone. Let's quickly go back to shapeless. Good stuff, 23 should be more than enough if we do a quick slash home. Not that we needed to, we could have used the remote in the other dimension actually, and uh, if we wanted to, we could have just made the filter there. But boom, and boom. The reason for the filter will become apparent fairly shortly. And then finally, we could also do with a, um, a big drawer or a big chest as well, because we are gonna have to store a lot of uh, resources that we gather out of the ground. So the iron chest mod does add these rather large chests. Uh, the way that these work, you start out by crafting a, uh, a regular old Minecraft chest, like so. And then from there, you can then craft the regular Minecraft chest into an iron chest with eight iron. And if you have eight gold, you can craft the regular iron chest into a gold chest. And then from there, you could hit the gold chest and craft it with two diamonds and some glass into a diamond chest. And then from there, you can take it all the way up to an obsidian chest, which I believe is the highest tier of chest. For that, we would need some more gold and some more diamonds, but I think that should be pretty doable, actually. If we just quickly head further back into the mining dimension, gold ore is obtainable at around Y level negative 17. It actually looks like it's fairly common around Y level, uh, y level negative 17. So we head back up a bit. We should be able to find some there. And then the diamond ore is most common right down at the bottom. So the lower you go, the more likely you are to find diamonds. So you know what, actually, we're already basically at the bottom. Let's see if we can't find a bit of diamond ore. We'll do some more uh, strip mining over here with our small tunnels. And then once we've got the, uh, the diamonds that we need, then we'll look at uh, seeing if we can't get some, some gold as well. So it didn't take too long, actually, to get uh, some gold and some diamonds. Let's go ahead and dissolve the gold there. And then let's go ahead and recombine that up in our compactor, which is out of juice, but that's just because we don't have any fuel in the new Invar generator. That's very easily fixable. Uh, also, let's do a quick inventory dump. Um, apparently, we can put the crafting remote here into one of our curio slots. Uh, you'll see it says slot charm. Anything that says slots and then a slot can be placed into one of these curio slots. Uh, you just click this button in your inventory. And then uh, if we put this in, it says it goes in the charm slot, which I think is one of these here. It's not bundle, it might be at the bottom. There it is, yeah. So we put it here. Apparently then, if we've got options, controls, key bindings, and type in remote, there is a network remote curio key bind. If I set that to Z, 
Apparently, Zed is already set to something. It's set to a lot of things. Uh, let me get rid of Zoom, toggle waypoints. I'll get rid of all of these for now. We can always change that in the future if we need them. And we press Z. Look at that. So even without having the simple storage remote in our inventory, we can just keep it in our curious slot. We can still just hit Z and it will uh, open for us, which is super useful because it means that we also don't have to like right click the actual remote. I am being told by the Twitch chat that there is potentially a bug that if we die with this in our curio slot that we won't get it back, it'll just be deleted. So for safety reasons, it might be worth just keeping it on us and using it as we have been doing up until now. But it looks like that other method is possible if, um, if you know for sure that you're not gonna die, I guess. And there we go, once we have eight gold, we can make our chest. Do we have some glass? We do not. However, I'm pretty sure that we can use the silicon dioxide here to make us some sand which we can, of course, then go ahead and smelt. We do also have extra obsidian, so I think we can go directly to the highest tier of chest. The highest tier of chest does require eight. Of course, if we want more obsidian, we can use our little nether portal uh, cheat to make that happen. I don't think it's cheating, but it is a little uh, cheesy, to say the least. Uh, let us spread this sand out just a little bit to try and make this um, a tiny bit faster. The Twitch chat is telling me that the obsidian chest is actually not any bigger than the diamond chest. It's just blast proof, so we don't actually need to go any further than the diamond chest. We can test it actually. If we throw this down, this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, nine by 12. So a pretty big chest. There's no reason not to upgrade it to obsidian. The obsidian is basically free. So if we just take this and, uh, and give it a craft up, we can go boom and boom. And it looks right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep, the Twitch chat is indeed correct. It is the exact same size as the diamond chest, but it also looks kind of cool. So if we now get ourselves a little bit of fuel in the way of wood here, and if we also get ourselves a little bit of fuel in the way of baked potatoes, we should be able to head on through into the mining dimension and, uh, and finally set up this quarry. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw down the builder. We're going to put our invar generator next to it, and we'll put some fuel into there to let that start backing up on power. Also, real quick, I will go ahead and get a hopper just so that we can uh, put in a little bit of extra fuel and, uh, and allow that to continue going for hopefully a little while longer than it otherwise would. Boom, there is our hopper. Uh, and for now, we can go ahead and drop that down right about there. Grab some of that uh, oak that I just put in the system. I did a little bit of, a, of an inventory clear because my inventory is uh, a l or was a little bit of a mess. There we go. That should keep feeding that. That should start getting a little bit of power. This, of course, is still very low in terms of power generation. 48 red stone flux per tick is not enough to run the builder at max speed. We will, of course, uh, shortly start looking at, uh, at ways to generate even more power, potentially looking at getting higher tier generators here. But for the time being, we want to put the obsidian chest directly on top of the builder. The builder will eject all of the items that it generates up and into this chest here. And then with the shape quarry card, you can either right click it in your hand to open up this interface, or you can put it in the builder. It goes right here. You can right click it from outside, or you can do it uh, from in the inventory. And then if you click the question mark button, it opens up the same GUI. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're set to box and we want to change hollow to solid. So we're going to dig out a solid cube, or we're going to scan, I should say, a solid cube for ores. Then down here, we can specify the area that we want to scan. So we are at Y level 69. And currently, Minecraft in the new versions, 1.18, goes down to negative 64. That means that in total, 69 plus 64 is 133. So we want to set this to do to go all the way down 133 levels. So right now, this is five by 133 by five. Basically what that means is that with the builder at the center, this will do a five by five area. So it'll go two blocks out to here and two blocks out to here. because that's one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five. So everything in this kind of like five by five area all the way down to bedrock is what it will scan. We can make that bigger, of course. We can change this to you know 15 by 15. So now it's gonna go, the, the builder is always at the center unless you uh, change it. But right now, it's going to go seven blocks out in each direction. Obviously, it's all going to make a square. And it's going to go all the way down to Y level zero or Y level negative 64. It's not quite going to go down to negative 64 just yet. Because again, the way that it works, if you imagine a cube, the builder is right at the center of the cube. And so what we need to do is we need to offset the Y level here by negative 66, I think. 
uh, approximately half of this, that's going to move the box down. If I, I, can I can show you how this works. If I move this up 66, actually, let's move it up 18. And then I click this button here. We can see this is what the cube looks like, right? So I've moved the cube up into the sky. What we want to do is do the exact same, but basically move it down underground, right? So that it, co it covers every single block from the bottom of the world, negative 64. By the way, you can press that to get rid of the visualization all the way down to, uh, all the way up, I should say, to the builder. So here, we're going to set this to negative 66. If we do a quick visualization, it looks like we are one block off. Let's unvisualize and move that down negative uh, 67. This does get a bit bugged sometimes, and sometimes it puts in numbers that you didn't put in. Just make sure you change them if that happens. Now, if we visualize, we don't see anything, but that's good because that means that this level here, if we break this and then unvisualize and revisualize, yeah, this is the top level that it is going to break, which is good. I'm going to scan. Now, by default, it will scan for everything that's not dirt and put it in this chest. That's not what we want. If we do that, we're going to get a ton of cobblestone, stone, random bits of like granite, andesite, diorite, all that stuff, right? That's not what we're after. Now, thankfully, over in here, you can void certain items by default. So if we click stone, cobblestone, dirt, gravel, sand, netherrack, and endstone, that's going to void all those. I'm also going to click the tags button here. That's going to void anything that has like the cobblestone tag. So there are some things in the pack that are basically the same as cobblestone. I think if you press, uh, is it F3H? It shows advanced tooltips. That might show us the tags. It does. So you'll see here that uh, right at the bottom, it has forged cobblestone. I'm pretty sure other things will also have that. Yeah, you'll see that this cobble, uh, cobbled ether stone also has the forge cobblestone tag halfway down there. And so by ticking that tags box, it should get rid of everything that's kind of just also cobblestone, but different, if that makes sense. The, the deep slate is also the same thing. That's going to get voided as well, I believe. And then you can press F3H to get rid of those uh, advanced tooltips. If you want to take it one step further, you can also use the filter module here, which I think I might do. We can add filters to this, and I think we can blacklist certain items because I think that the filter, like the basic filter that's in the quarry card by default, isn't comprehensive. And I think there are going to be things that we don't want the builder's going to get, but the only way that we're going to know if there's stuff that we don't want is by turning this builder on and letting it work. So if we do this and this, we can use the lever to turn the builder on. If we turn it on, you'll see that it's going to very quickly start breaking stuff. I don't know why it turned the grass into dirt, but that's fine. It gives us a nice uh, visualization, I guess, as to where we're at. But you can see it's going down and it's generating resources. Basically, it's scanning all the way down. And every time it finds a piece of ore, it's going to break it and put it in this chest. Now, it started off very fast because we had like 300,000 redstone flux backed up here. Um, but now we're running at normal speed again, which is going to be a little slow. Now you can see at the top here, the uh, level that it's currently working at and the chunk that it's currently working on. It's going to go chunk by chunk and work its way all the way down to Y level zero. And as it goes, it's going to deposit items into this chest. I guess ideally we could also maybe look at some point at getting an ender chest down as well. This shouldn't be too difficult. We did see that we have a blaze spawner fairly close to us in the nether. So getting blaze wards should be fairly easy. And then from there, the uh, eyes of ender we can of course make because we have the neodymium to make ender pearls and we can make blaze powder from the aforementioned blaze wards. So uh, once we have like a decent power setup here, we can look at using that um, ender chest to bring the, all of the stuff back through to the overworld that we can then process and drop into hopefully their own storage drawers. Now, the Twitch chat is saying that the lever here is turning off the generator, which it appears to be doing. That is very bizarre. I did not think it would pass through. If I move the lever to there, that fixes it. Okay, so it looks like the, the redstone signal was just passing through the generator there, or passing through the builder, I should say, into the generator, which is why that wasn't doing anything. Yeah, now you can hear that it's slowly but surely making its way through uh, all of the blocks there. Interesting. Okay. Um, there are, of course, more generators that we can make. And there is a, an extremely high-end generator here, the Everlasting Generator, which produces 65,000 redstone flux per tick. That's insane. Um, it does, however, require stone and an unobtainium generator, which is unobtainium with vibranium generators and all the modium generators and netherite generators and obsidian and diamond and gold and iron. And it goes all the way back. That seems like it might be a little tricky for us to come by. I actually have no idea where we get unobtainium from. Like, I assume there's some unobtainium ore, maybe. Player mineable only, not quarryable. High end, end Highlands biome. Oh, so we might have to go to the end 
to actually get that. So we'll leave that going in the mining dimension for now. It is going to be fairly slow, but it is going to passively generate resources for us. And of course, in the future, we can come back and, and look at our power situation. And if we can increase our power, we can then uh, obviously start making that builder much, much faster. And um, you can cover a giant area, by the way. The area we're doing is fairly small. It's a 15 by 15 by 133. But uh, you can go up to a maximum of 512 by 512 by 512. So you can do a giant uh, cube if you want to make that happen. People do make a good point in that right now it's not chunk loaded. That is fair. If we head on back through here, what you can do is uh, if you open your inventory, in the top left there is FTB chunks. You can click on a chunk to claim it. That will basically mean that if you're playing on a server, other players can't break or place or interact with anything in that area. But if you shift left click, that will force load the chunk. Uh, you'll see that we only have 25 of those, but that's gonna claim this chunk. Uh, if you press F3G, that shows you the chunk boundaries. So everything inside of this square will stay loaded even when we're not here in this dimension, which is pretty cool. But uh, back over here, people in the Twitch chat have recommended this pocket storage unit. Uh, this can hold eight different items, up to 255 of each, automatically absorbs items on pickup, voids excess. This seems like it could be super useful. Uh, now, to make it, we need two pistons, a chest, four iron, and two redstone. So the only things we're missing there are the pistons, uh, and it does look like we're a little low on iron, but I assume that, yeah, we do have a few extra lying around in there. Fantastic. Let's go one and two. And boom, there is our pocket storage device. The idea here is that I think between streams, I will do a little bit of manual mining just to allow us to get uh, even more resources so that we're not waiting on that quarry um, to get us everything we need. And I think if any of you have played with the dank storage mods of the past, uh, that's not me using the word dank um, descriptively, that was the name of the mod, but I believe this works in a fairly similar way. There are a few tiers of it. We might look at upgrading to a higher tier, but for now, if we head on back through to the mining dimension, and we go down. Right now, when we strip mine, we get a lot of cobblestone, right? And ideally, we'd like to delete that. So I believe what we should be able to do is in the device, if we put cobblestone in here, now any cobblestone that we pick up, instead of going into our inventory, it's going to go straight into the pocket storage device. And the idea here is that, one, it clears up our inventory, but two, it also voids excess items. So once we get past uh, 255 cobblestone, any extra cobblestone that we pick up is going to be deleted. So right now we can take this cobble out, but once we get more than 255, it's going to delete that excess. And right now this has eight slots. So as we go down, there are other things that we're going to mine that we don't want to keep on us. Things like deep slate are also blocks that we uh, that we don't really want. So as we get further down, stuff like dark stone, this stuff here, not really something that we want to be clogging up our inventory. We can put that in there. And, you know, we'll keep 255, but once we get any more, it's going to be deleted. Cobbled Deep Slate is in the exact same boat. We can put that in here. The benefit for the higher tier pocket storage units here is that it holds more items. So we can hold up to 4,096 Cobblestone, Deep Slate, Blackstone, whatever it is. But it also, I believe, gives us more slots. It does. It gives us 16 instead of 8. We can then go up to 32. And finally, all the way up to 64, which can hold up to a million of each item and up to 64 of those items to allow us to delete a ton of stuff. That's going to make life super easy because now going forward, if we go to mining tunnel and we just go ahead and mine, we're not going to end up with stuff clogging our inventory. And whenever we do end up with stuff clogging our inventory, we can just open our pocket storage device, drop in the, I don't know why the cobbled deep side didn't get picked up, uh, but drop in the resources we don't want, like the tough, and then go back to, uh, to doing a small tunnel. That's the one I want. And then as we pick stuff up, it should get put away. I can't help but notice that the cobbled stone there isn't getting, uh, the cobbled deep slate isn't getting put away. Oh, okay, I see. Right, thank you, chat. Yes, I am crouching for no reason. There's no need for me to crouch. I understand. If you crouch, it will place the items in your inventory. If you don't crouch, it will put the items in the pocket storage device. Nice. Okay, it actually doesn't look like it's that expensive to upgrade this to the gold tier. Uh, and again, we didn't need to come home for this because we can access all of our stuff from within the uh, the mining dimension. Um, I do have a question, though, and I guess we can test it here. I want to know if we can upgrade from one tier to the next without losing our progress. Like, if I do upgrade it, will it delete what's in here or will it keep what's in there? So one and two pistons, and then that should be everything to upgrade to tier two. We can, fantastic. And so now if I open this, it does retain its previous storage. That's good to know. And now if we go back, 
we uh, have more slots, 16 in total, to put any extra you know, bits of junk that we happen to come across. Obviously, depending on which Y level we're at, it's going to vary and that's going to change what kind of junk we get. Um, but it also doesn't have to necessarily be used for junk. Obviously, if you have the tier one pocket unit, that's really only useful for things like cobblestone, you know, andesite, granite, diorite, things that you don't want to be having a ton of, really. But as you get bigger, you can use it to hold everything, really, right? There's nothing stopping us putting redstone in here. It can hold up to 4,095 redstone. So we're probably not going to get that much redstone on one mining trip. And so as we go here, we can just take not, not even just the bad stuff. We can take good stuff as well and put that good stuff into here. And then when we get home, we can just deposit it. That is super cool. I'm learning more here. The Twitch chat has pointed out that there is a deposit function on this as well. So we've got 173 cobblestone there. If we walk over and shift right click on our draw controller, it will deposit all but one of the cobblestone out of here directly into the draw. Again, that kind of reinforces the idea of using this to hold things like lapis, redstone, diamonds, emeralds, anything like that. Because if we get a storage draw for each of those items, we can just store up to 4,096 you know, lapis, redstone, diamonds in the pocket storage unit. And then when we come back up to the surface, we can right click onto the draw controller. Again, if I show you here, if we take some uh, encrypted matter, if we take some oxygen and we temporarily put some of those in here, we can then just shift right click on the draw controller and it will take all of the encrypted matter and oxygen apart from one out of the pocket storage unit and deposit it directly into the draw controller. That is super useful and it's going to make it much, much easier to deposit large amounts of items when we get back uh, if we do do any big mining trips. And finally here, it also looks like shift left click, I'm being told, does the opposite. So if you have an item in here and you wanted to, for whatever reason, take something out, you can shift left click. We've got uh, currently 374 encrypted matter in here. Shift left click, pulls all of that matter out and puts it into the pocket storage unit. Very cool. Uh, but again, only if there's already a slot for it. So it doesn't pull out things like hydrogen that don't already have a slot. That is super cool. I like that a lot. So I think, chat, that that is probably going to do it for today. I think what I'm going to do between streams is I'll spend a little bit of time down in uh, our mining dimension, getting a couple of resources and trying to process those resources so that we have uh, some stuff ready to go. You can see we are getting things here. I'll keep an eye on this. Um, we might end up setting up a filter next stream to, uh, to filter out if there's some stuff that we don't want to have lying around. I also do think that, uh, as I mentioned a few times now, we definitely do want to look at sorting out our storage situation. So next time we'll come back, hopefully we'll have, you know, a fair amount of iron, a fair amount of gold, uh, a couple of diamonds maybe. We'll look at condensing our drawers down to a couple of chests, you know, potentially diamond chests, depending on how many diamonds we have. We'll look at setting up more storage drawers for our key items. Again, right now we probably have a lot of the same stuff, like we've got a lot of cobbled deep slate here, taking up a ton of space. For now, I guess we can just store that all inside of our uh, portable storage unit if we wanted to, but again, if we wanted to ever use that, we could also get a storage drawer for it, um, and it's going to be a lot more effective than having it clog up our chests. But we'll get more storage drawers for more of our key items, things like redstone, diamonds, uh, and all of our ingots. We'll have storage drawers for those. Next time, we'll come back and we'll look at vastly increasing the amount of power that we're generating. Because right now, we're only generating 48 RF per tick. Maybe, I guess, you could say we're generating uh, 96 if you count both Invar generators, but really, we're not producing too, too much. So we'll start looking at generating more power that's going to allow us to get more resources. We'll then maybe look at processing those resources, although we might have to go a bit further through the quest line here because to unlock things like create or uh, thermal expansion or mechanism, we do have to go through the custom progression here. So what we might have to do first, we could upgrade our power just by upgrading generators, which we might do, might do some basic power upgrades. But I think if we want to get some serious power upgrades and some serious or processing, we might have to first run through and uh, and kind of continue back onto the progression line, get ourselves a mixing cauldron, get ourselves a blood altar, and then see if we can't make some andesite alloy to unlock create. And then we can start using create potentially for all processing. Create does add the crushing wheels. It also adds things like the encased fan, which you can use to, uh, to smelt ores and to cook food and stuff like that, obviously. There's the Tinker Smeltery. This is going to be super useful for us. It's going to allow us to make even better custom Tinker's tools. Right now, we're still just using a stone axe. We could definitely do with getting a full suite of tools, getting a hatchet, getting a shovel, maybe getting a mattock, and, uh, and potentially upgrading those past just the stone level. You know, start making like iron tools and things like that. Um, right now, with the current setup we have, you can only make uh, very basic tools, things like wood, cobblestone, uh, maybe obsidian. But uh, if you want to go further, if you want to make start making tools out of, you know, gold, silver, uh, maybe even some complex alloys like manulin and, um, and hepatizin, we need to get a smeltery down and we need to upgrade that smeltery to be able to make those custom materials. But those are all problems for future Isaac.
for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there. 